What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the camera, everyone. This is Lee, and yes, today is the day we'll be talking about the Pentax KP versus the Fuji XT30. And yes, yes, I know, I know. Why am I reviewing a two and a half year old DSLR camera versus a 2019 mirrorless camera? And my answer to you guys is, Many people want to see a Pentax KP review, and I think this is the best way to go about it. And number two, I just want to see how far off Pentax really is in the current markets right now, because Pentax, they don't crank out a new camera every single year. It's been two and a half years since their last APS-C camera, and I just want to see how far off they are in today's current market, pretty much, guys. And I think many of you guys are probably wondering the same thing, too. So. Without further ado, let's get going, guys. The Pentax is 800 USD while the Fuji is 900 USD. They are both APS-C sensor cameras. The Pentax KP shoots about 24 megapixel, whereas the Fuji X-C30 shoots 26 megapixel with a BSI sensor, and this is what it looks like. Definitely, the Fuji X-C30 has slightly more detail. The Pentax KP shoots seven frames per second, whereas the Fuji X-C30 shoots eight frames per second, and in electronic shutter mode, you'd be able to shoot up to 30 frames per second at a 1.25 crop. The Pentax has 27 autofocus points, whereas the Fuji has 425 face detection points, and that's a lot of points, guys. The Pentax battery life lasts slightly longer than the Fuji X-T30. However, both cameras, if you do own one or the other, you need to buy two spare batteries. It does run out real quick. The Pentax KP has a thumb pad for navigation for the menus, whereas the Fuji X-T30, they switched from a thumb pad to a joystick, and so that was quite interesting to see. They both have three inch screens and they also they both sport one SD card slot. The Pentax shutter max is 6,000, whereas the Fuji is 4,000 shutter. The ISO for the Pentax KP, the maximum you could go up to is 819,000 ISO, whereas the Fuji X-T30 is 51,200. And that's just, I don't think I'll ever shoot that high regardless. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't really care how high Pentex goes, but that's just too much. Even 51,000, that's kind of too much. But that's just my own opinion, of course, guys. But as for the special feature portion, things get quite interesting. Now, the Pentex KP offer Astro Tracer, whereas the Fuji XT30, you do not have the option at all. However, you could buy a separate Star Tracker module, and I bought a Vixen once. It was about 400 USD at that time, but you could pick one up for 300 USD, and you need to buy two extra tripod head want to hold the unit and the other one to hold your camera and so that is an option for you guys if you guys want to shoot the stars with your fuji xt30 pentax has pixel shift whereas fuji doesn't have anything even close to pixel shift the pentax kp offer three different grips whereas the fuji xt30 do not offer any separate grip for your camera they expect you to hold the camera as it is but if you guys want to you guys can definitely go to amazon like i did and i bought an extra grip from a third party that's not official by fuji but you can still buy for your camera the pentax kp is weather resistant whereas the fuji xt30 is not the pentax kp tripod position is much better than the fuji xt30 you could definitely pop out your battery without taking out your tripod plate Whereas the Fuji X-T30, you need to remove the tripod plate in order to take out your battery and also your SD card. The Pentax KP also offer IBIS, whereas the Fuji X-T30 do not offer IBIS, which is shocking. And uh, the X-T3 don't offer that as well. Only their X-H1 and that's just, I, I don't know why they don't put IBIS in their cameras. That's just kind of weird to me. With that said, they depend on the IS on the lens. And so how many lenses do Fuji have that have IS? About roughly 13 out of 31 lenses. And so if you look at Pentax, they have over 100 lenses. And uh, once you buy a Pentax KP, every single one of them have IS. So that is something for you guys. And also if you are shooting manual lenses, definitely your manual lenses would also have IS in it just because of the body. But Fuji X-T30 is more compact. Fuji X-T30 has a touch screen. Fuji X-T30 has a much more elegant look. It looks like a classic camera. They have the manual dials on the top and that's just something people get attracted to. It's really good looking pretty much. And uh, it does offer 4K and Pentax doesn't offer 4K. However, there is a caveat with that. In my test with the 4K recording, it gets pretty hot guys. Um, after 20 minutes of recording indoors in an AC environment, it was about 140 Fahrenheit. That's how hot it was. Now. That was after 20 minutes. Now, if I was outside in the summer heat, yeah, it's going to be about more than 140, pretty much. And keep in mind, coffee is around 160 degrees. That's a, you know, average ballpark of coffee temperature. So 
just want to throw that out there. That is something that um, you guys should know about the 4K recording on the Fuji X-T30. It's just pretty warm, guys. It's frightening. I actually won't be shooting no 4K on my Fuji officially. That's just no no go for me. Actually, that's the first camera I ever felt that was really hot. I just didn't feel comfortable ever filming on that anymore. It's like, no, that's it. So. This is one that you guys know about my experience with the Fuji X-T30 so far. So with all that in mind, let's get into some ISO tests. So at ISO 100, there is absolutely no real big difference between either cameras. And at ISO 400, the same deal. There is no real difference between either one. At ISO 800, the same deal. However, once you go to ISO 1600, it gets slightly noisy on the Fuji. Whereas, once we jack up to 3200, the noise level seems to be higher on the KP. However, the Fuji, if you take a closer look, it looks a bit softer. It looks like it just got, you know, blurred out or something. It looks a little weird, whereas the KP, you can see it's slightly more detailed, even though it's a bit noisy. So that's something for you guys to know about. At ISO 6400, the same thing. And also at ISO 12800, just about the same deal, guys. It's basically, it's just a little noisier on the KP, but you get slightly more detail. Whereas the Fuji, it gets slightly softer once you go a higher ISO. So if that's the general case, because ISO 100 to 1600, I mean, even to 3200, that's pretty good for both cameras, to be quite honest. It's pretty good, guys. And yes, also Fuji people, I definitely turned everything off. I looked at all your menus. Oh my goodness, there are so many things that are turned on in that camera. That's just, it's just ridiculous. I turned everything off in that camera. So just wanna let everyone know that. Now, as for the dynamic range, everybody knows how much I love to do this. I love to underexpose my shot and I like to raise the exposure in Lightroom and see how much detail is left between each camera. So this is what it looks like on the Pentax KP, and this is what it looks like on the Fuji X-T30, and yes, I know everyone's probably saying this, that definitely the Fuji is slightly bluer, whereas the Pentax KP is slightly purple. For everyone else that's kind of curious about pixel shift, this is what it looks like in play right here. As you can see, with pixel shift, with anything with a tripod, you will get a better image if you're shooting something still, pretty much. You'll get a better image on the Pentax versus the Fuji. No doubt about it, you'll get a better image at the end of the day. And as for the purple, guys, I know some people don't like the purple, and that's totally fine. Even me, I hate the purple, and I was able to change the purple to blue to kind of almost match the Fuji. So if you know how to edit your photos, you know how to change these things. So. That is something for you guys to know about in this test. So as for white balance, I kept everything at zero, zero. This is factory default settings. I did not change anything. I'm also shooting at auto white balance. So I'm gonna show you guys what these manufacturers has given the end users and what you'll end up with when you are shooting with both cameras. I took a picture of my garage. I'm taking a photo of a soft white light bulb. Now, those people that know what's a soft white light bulb, is basically a yellowish tone. And so this is what it looks like at auto white balance. This is what both cameras are taking right now. As you can see, the Pentax is giving you a true representation of reality, whereas Fuji is giving you something that's, I guess, on the more cooler side of things. It is not what it is in real life. That's just, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't look bad. It's just not realistic. I. I I'd rather change reality than let the camera do it for me. That's just me. This is my own opinion. And let's take a look at an outdoor shot at auto white balance. Now, let's take a closer look. Essentially, this is a summer hot day. Summer hot day. The grass out there is burnt. It's just burnt. This is what Fuji XT is giving me and this is what Pentax is giving me. On the Fuji, it looks good. I, I don't doubt that. The Fuji looks good. There's a problem. It looks it looks like a spring day instead of a summer day. So it's just a misrepresentation of what's actually happening. And uh, that's just, for some people out there, that might be a huge concern because some people are in the fields where color is, is mandatory right off the bat 
even at auto white balance, they need to have the most accurate color and this is not what I was expecting. It's, it looks great, don't get me wrong, it looks great, it's good, it's good for those artsy stuff and that's, that's, that's cool, but for those people that needs accurate coloring, it just, I don't know. It looks like a spring day and here is what it looks like when I switch both of them on to daylight in the white balance section. Yeah, as you can see, it's, it's really off, it's really different. Um, yeah, this is a summer hot day. Keep that in mind. Summer hot day in July, summer hot day. And this is what it looks like in cloudy mode. I just wanna give you guys an idea on the colors between each cameras and essentially in my tests, it looks like Fuji makes things a bit more cooler. Whereas Pentax, it's a bit, you know, realistic in real life and it has a touch of purple pretty much. So I just wanted to let you guys know about that. That is something for you guys to, you know, take note of. And last but not least, this is my high exposure, high dynamic range part right here. Now, I know, I know, I know. People have seen this test in Fuji world. So here is a shot of the blinds. It's overexposed and everything. And the idea is to underexpose it in Lightroom to see how much details can you retain, even though you're being blind out by the sun. And this is what it looks like on Pentax KP versus Fuji XC30. Yeah, there you go, guys. So it looks pretty much the same. However, I know the Fuji community is gonna say, why don't you change your HDR to 400? And, and so I did that and yes, yes, Fuji HDR looks much better once you do that. However, unfortunately, Pentax could do that two and a half years ago. Yes, we do have a dynamic range portion in our camera. You just gotta tweak it up. And there you go, guys. Once I was able to tweak it up, I was able to retain very similar images between the Fuji XE30. And so I'm sorry to break Fuji's heart, but it just, it is what it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of interesting features on the Fuji, but once you play with the Pentax, you'll realize that Pentax have been offering all these features and most people don't realize that. So that is something for you guys to know about. So there you go, guys. That is sort of the major difference between each cameras. In my honest opinion, I think there's a lot of pros and cons in both, but it's really up to you guys to let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below in the next three parts. Yes, I'm doing three part series. I'm going to do a landscape wide angle lens. You guys know which one I'm talking about. I have a mid range lens that's coming in. Surprise, surprise. And in the end, I'm doing a telephoto testing, of course, 100 to 400 versus the 150 to 450. So you guys know those lenses. So in the end, this is just the beginning pretty much. But all in all, please leave your comments and questions below. I would definitely love to hear from you guys because I'm, uh, as you can see in my expression, this is, this is, this is real. I own the camera. I'm confused all as to if I should keep the Fuji or not, but we'll just have to see after this next three tests because yeah, we'll just have to see guys. We'll just have to see. And uh, yeah, if you guys like this video, click like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, take it easy. Peace.